How many of you early in your life were taught to chase leads, convince people to do business with you? And business was hard, right? You got to chase leads. You got to call X number of people a week. You got to try to convince them to do business with you. How many of you were taught that when you started your business? Raise your hand. So what I want to teach you in our time together is I want to show you a methodology that I used over the last 10 years to create thousands of leads per month, to have incoming demand like you can't imagine, to work with some of the top people in the world and to never chase business again. Because if you get this right and you become a must have versus a nice to have, you become a known quantity in the world. How many of you believe that when you're a known quantity in the world, it's so much easier to sell something when people know who you are? When you're known, people take your phone calls. When you're known, you are attracting people to you versus chasing people. I don't want to be just somebody out in the market. I want to be the player in the market. I don't want to be the A coach. I want to be the best coach. I don't want to be a, a insurance person. I want to be the number one insurance person. Deep within each one of us it is, is a deep desire to become known. Before I get started, I want to say a very special thing because I have a, a basically a 12-week-old son named Elias Michael, and I was thinking when Elias Michael grows up, one of the things that would be great if he grows up to be half the man that Cody Askins is. Would you believe that? Give, give Cody and Lauren Askins a big round of applause. Conference on for, for, for seeing something. Cody and Lauren were sitting on the front row when I spoke at 10x to 10,000 people. And they sat there, and they watched, and they absorbed, and they took notes. And just by stance, after I got done speaking, I went down on the front row. And Cody and Lauren were sitting there right behind me, and I just turned around and looked at them, smiled at them. And at the conference, he made a decision to go pro. How many of you in your life want to go pro? You want to leave your amateur desires behind and go pro. Raise your hand if you want to go pro, folks. Nate, Nate Alford has gone pro. Cody Askins has gone pro. Matt Monero, Judge Graham, already gone pro. Inky Johnson's already gone pro. Tim Story's already gone pro. And inside of you, what I'm going to teach you today is how you go from an amateur in your life and leave your amateur behind and, and ultimately end up being a person of interest. How many of you early in your life were taught to chase leads, convince people to do business with you, and business was hard? Right? You got to chase leads. You got to call X number of people a week. You got to try to convince them to do business with you. How many of you were taught that when you started your business? Raise your hand. Chasing anything sucks. How many of you agree? Chasing business sucks. And what I said to him is I said, I want to build a business that is so attractive that other people are chasing me. I want to go to my office on Monday morning and have so much incoming demand, so many incoming leads that I get to pick and choose who I work with, who I don't, what I charge, what I don't, right? I want to become, and I wrote down three words, I want to become a person of interest. I want to be a person of interest. And then I would go about writing this book called Person of Interest, which would become one of my best-selling books in the world. So what I want to teach you in our time together is I want to show you a methodology that I used over the last 10 years to create thousands of leads uh, per month, to have incoming demand like you can't imagine, to work with some of the top people in the world, and to never chase business again. Because if you get this right and you become a must-have versus a nice-to-have, you become a known quantity in the world. How many of you believe that when you're a known quantity in the world, it's so much easier to sell something when people know who you are? See, when you're known, people answer the phone. When you're known, people take your phone calls. When you're known, you are attracting people to you versus chasing people. Okay? And, and so when I wrote this book, what I was really saying is, man, I want to become a known quantity in the world. Now, I live outside of Nashville, Tennessee. How many of you have ever been to Nashville before? It's a great city. And if you go to the Nashville International Airport, you will see people coming into Nashville, and they don't have any money. They don't have any friends. They have a guitar on their back, and they have a dream in their heart, and they come to Nashville for one reason, to become famous. 
And they go down to Broadway and they play country music for hours and hours and hours, sometimes for $40, for $50, for four hours, in hopes of one day becoming known. And they play and they play, sometimes for four years and five years and six years and 10 years. And then if they become known and famous, they literally go from playing on Broadway for 50 bucks over to playing at Bridgestone Arena for 500,000 bucks or 5 million bucks. They're still singing the same songs. They're still the same people. They got a dream in their heart and they got a drive to become known and famous in the world. How many of you growing up had a dream in your heart to become known in the world, to matter, to count, to be somebody. I was raised by a single mother who had me when she was 16 years old. My mother and father married for one year, and then they divorced. My father never came to one baseball game I played, one basketball game. He never told me he loved me. He never gave me a hug. He never said, good job, son. I, I still remember going to his house on the, uh, every now and then to visit, and I, and I called my mom and said, please don't make me go. I don't know him. And he don't know me. I was not known to my own father. Now, would that have something to do many years later with me writing a book about becoming known in the world? How many of you think it would? could? So let me ask you a question. Should I be mad at my father or should I go back and thank him? Because it probably I wouldn't be the man I am today, the super coach, Coach Michael Bird. I wouldn't have written the best-selling book, Person of Interest, if I would have had the dad that I needed. Everybody see that? That planted a seed in me, and I said, one of these days when I grow up, man, I want to be known. I want to be somebody in the world. I want to make a significant difference. I want to go out and not do it small. I don't want to be just somebody out in the market. I want to be the player in the market. I don't want to be the A coach. I want to be the best coach. I don't want to be a, a insurance person. I want to be the number one insurance person. Deep within each one of us it is, is a deep desire to become known. To not just be one of thousands, but to be somebody in the world. So when you think about this, uh, what I'm going to share with you is a process that I really codified. Remember that word codified. How many of you are very good at baking the cake? And you've done it for years. You're good. What you need to become good at to be a person of interest is learning how to break down what you have done so that you can sell it to other people. Almost every person I coach, uh, whether it be Cody Askins or whether it be Nate Alford, or whether it be some of the people here in the audience, one, the, one of the number one things I teach them is, I want you to become so good that other people would pay good money to learn how you do what you do. I want you to become a coach. Okay, because you're good at baking the cake, now we got to learn how to sell the recipe. But to sell the recipe, we got to learn how to codify the process, which means how do we take it out of your brain and package it and sell it? How do we take what you're great at and take it to the marketplace? Because it doesn't matter how talented you are if I can't absorb it. You don't have a book. You don't have a podcast. You don't have a speaking engagement. You don't have a coaching. You, right? I want to teach you. Okay? So everything I'm going to give you, you can get in this slide presentation. If you just text that number, I'll give you the presentation. And it's got my, my handwritten notes in the presentation. Okay? So just text that number. I'll give you the entire presentation of what I'm going to talk about today. Because this has changed everything for the people I coach. It helped a real estate agent go from doing 60 deals a year to 60 deals a month. It's helped insurance people go from doing a few deals to a lot of deals. You get this right. See, I didn't understand when I left coaching that the very first thing I should be doing is becoming known in the world. See, branding comes before marketing. Branding is about becoming known which is why we do thousands and thousands of videos. If you go to my YouTube channel right now, right, we do thousands of videos to become known so people can identify with you. Why do we do the podcast? To become known. Why do we do the speaking engagements? To become known. The first step to selling anything is becoming known. Then you market and distribute a message to people who need it. So you brand first, then you market, then you distribute. And I didn't really understand this. I just thought if I became a great coach, people would just come running, right? What if I told you it doesn't matter how good you are if nobody knows it? How many of you think you're the best kept secret in the world? You're real good, but nobody knows it, right? Well, you can't sell a secret, folks, okay? You have to become known on planet 
earth. Not just known in your market. Some of you are still playing too small. You're thinking, how do I go back and dominate my local market? What you need to be thinking about is how do I dominate planet earth? That's your market. It's not your local market. So when you're thinking about this concept of, of being a person of interest, here, here's my beliefs. I believe the people who get the most attention get the most opportunity. How many of you guys believe that? How many of you seen somebody real bad get a lot of opportunity because they were real good at marketing? There's somebody in your market that just dominates. You're like, man, why do they get all this business? Because they're much better at becoming known than you are. Okay, my daughter, eight years old, we're driving to school every single morning, and we play word games. I say, sweetheart, I'm going to give you a word. You tell me what the word means. And I start going through these words. Confidence, bounce back, resilience, toughness, money. And I'm going through all these words. And she's giving me her definitions of these words. Daddy, confidence means this. Resilience means this. Bounce back means this. Money means this. And then she stops and she says, Daddy, they don't teach me any of these words at school. She loves the greatest showman. The show, the greatest showman, P.T. Barnum. She watches it over and over and over. And I said, sweetheart, what are you learning from that show? Well, he had a hard life and people didn't like him and, you know, all these things. And I said, no, no, what you need to be learning is P.T. Barnum learned how to be a person of interest. He knew how to get people where? To the circus. Because once he knew he got people in the door, then he could sell them on the elephant rides. Then he could sell them on this. Then he could sell them on this. He was a master at becoming known. Some of you are real good, but you're not real known. You don't have a talent problem. You got a marketing problem, right? When you're good, like when I get you, man, man, you're good, but nobody knows it. So what I understand is the people who get the most attention get the most opportunity. When I spoke at 10X, I made a million dollars from one hour. What did that teach me? Teach me I need to get in front of 10,000 people more often, right or wrong? <laughs> okay, because if you can make a million dollars in an hour... It was just sheer numbers, right? I'm going to show you the law of diffusion in a minute. For every person you present an idea to, roughly 16% of those people are going to be interested. Then a number of people need to see it three times. Then a number of people need to see it seven times. Then a number of people need to see it 15 times. But the first step is, man, we got to, we got to get on stage. We, we got to figure this out, right? The best products don't win. The best marketed products win. Everything is based on perception. Can you build that perception, yes or no? You can build that perception. Cody and Lauren sat there and said, we're going to build 8% Nation. They didn't know how they were going to do it. They didn't know where they were going to do it. They didn't know how much it was going to cost they were going to do it. It cost a lot more than they thought it was, right? Yes. Amen. <laughs> Amen, they said. But they just had a vision. My vision for Cody last night is, man, 8% is relevant in every industry. Not just insurance, right or wrong. I texted him last night and I said, there's 8% of people that make it in this business and 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 this business. See, when I start coaching people, I see a bigger future for them. And I speak that into their life. When I saw Nate Alford, man, here's what I see for you. You're good. We need to take you bigger. Right? A good coach will take you to places you didn't even know you wanted to go to. Right or wrong? They will speak things into your life and affirm and validate you in such a way that you begin to see it in your own self. So here's what I begin. You begin to build that perception. So here's our problems as business owners. No matter what we're selling, and I've coached some of the top insurance people in the world. My top insurance person is making about $4 million a year personally that I've coached. He took this book, Person of Interest. He was selling a certain type of insurance. He said, man, i got to quit selling insurance, and i got to start selling a belief. Because he read the book, Person of Interest, he began to build out what's called the explanation of service. He began to sell in beliefs versus selling insurance. How many think I can get insurance anywhere? I can get insurance anywhere. What I can't get anywhere is you. What I can't get anywhere is your belief. What I can't get anywhere is your conviction. So you're not selling insurance. You're selling a set of beliefs, folks. And this person right here, I said, man, you, you, you have this concept, and you need to learn how to package and deliver that concept in a better way. And because of that, he developed a concept called the explanation of services. He makes about $4 million a year because he ain't selling insurance. He's selling a set of beliefs. And when you get real good at selling a set of beliefs, no matter what you're selling, the people that want to buy it are going to allow them to buy it. So our goal is to become known. They said when President Trump became uh, president that 96% of Americans knew who he was. First step to doing anything is what? Become known. So much easier to sell what you got when people know who you are. 
because you're a known person in the world. How many of you feel unknown right now? Raise your hand. You're just not known in the world. You're not a person of interest. You're a little baby person of interest. You're a little baby star with the potential to be a big star. Potential idea of kinetic energy that is stored until utilized. Okay? Mr. Askins, when did you know that your son had something special? Right when he popped out? He's like, boom, this guy's going to be a little winner right here. But he, I guarantee you, you begin to see potential in him, right? There's this idea of embryonic growth that will be better today than we were yesterday. We'll be better tomorrow than we are today. I'm coaching a 75-year-old in Houston, Texas. He's managing $6 billion worth of money. He called me one day and said, man, I'm 75 years old, but I still got one more swing in me. Will you be my coach? Is that impressive, yes or no? Right? So here's the deal. Here's, I walk in. I say you're managing $6 billion of money. You're already really good. Here's the problem. Nobody knows who you are. You are known to a very small number of people. So we implemented a person of interest strategy. We helped him write a book. We've got him on podcasts. Now he's doing documentaries. Now he's taking his message to the world. Now he's went from picking up one new client a month to three new clients a month. That's a net gain of 24 more clients in a year. And when you're managing $6 billion, folks, that's a lot of money. Right or wrong? Here's the deal. 75 years old. Nobody ever taught him you need to become a person of interest. He is a person of interest just to, just to too few people. So when you think about this, you're really selling to too few people on planet Earth. And these are the ingredients of people of interest. And the reason I like showing this is because what I want you to do is I want you to look at these and think about what is your missing structure? What is holding you back from, from becoming known? The great Jim Rohn said, to attract other people, we must become attractive and being attractive is not in how handsome or good looking you are it's in what type of energy you put out to the universe it's in what type of ingredients you have you have something that other people want they're attracted to you inky johnson has a toughness and a resilience and a, and a, and a, and, a, and a bounce back that we want right or wrong Matt Monero and Judge Graham know how to grow a business. And I spent three hours with them yesterday. They have something I want. How do I scale this coaching company? How do I grow this? How do I expand this? All of the people that are here, okay? My buddy Tim Story is going to speak this afternoon. He has the ability to look at you and see something in you that you don't see in yourself. The first time he met me, he said, Coach, you have an apostolic gift. I said, what is that? <laughs> What's that mean? He said, you have the ability to reach inside of another person and pull the greatness out of them while simultaneously encouraging them to go coach other people. And I attract all kinds of people who want to be coaches. I didn't see it. It was natural to me. It was factory installed in me. It took him to see it. That's his gift. So when you think about what you're missing up here, what is the ingredient that you're missing? And when I wrote this book roughly 10 years ago, I didn't know that 10 years later it would become even more popular. I was a little baby person of interest when I wrote it. I wanted to become a big-time person of interest. I wasn't there, though. And here's what I said I need. I said, man, I need knowledge, but I don't just need any knowledge. I need a specific knowledge. Think specialist versus generalist. General practitioners never make as much money as heart surgeons, right or wrong. You don't need to be a person in the insurance business. You need to pick a lane, folks. And you need to say, I'm going to be the number one dude in the world at this right here. This one thing. I'm going to be the best at this. It may not be selling a product. It is a very special knowledge set you have. And then I've got a very specific skill set. Money doesn't buy you freedom. Skills buys you freedom. The stronger your skill set is, the more money you're going to make. Would you agree, yes or no? I see so many people and their skills are weak. Can't open a conversation, can't explain their services, can't follow up appropriately, can't bring a deal to a close, can't communicate. These are skills that can be grown. Third thing you need is high desire. Desire and effort go together. That's what I refer to as prey drive, which is instinctual ability inside of you to see something with the eyes or in the mind and have the persistence and intensity to pursue it. It can be activated. This conference will activate your prey drive. What's going to happen, though, is if you don't have a coach in your life pushing you and challenging you, is that prey drive flickers. So you get excited. And then you fall off the wagon. You get excited, 
and then you fall off the wagon. You start with good intention, and then you fail to follow through, and you experience guilt. How many people have done that before? You start with good intention. That's human nature, folks. You start with good intention. You leave on fire. Then you fall off the wagon, and then you experience guilt. What's the, what's the guilt associated with? Grief. What are we grieving? Our lost potential. I've spoken at at least two funerals where they asked me to give the eulogy at two funerals. And I went to people around the person that had passed away, and I said, tell me what they've done. Tell me what they've accomplished. Their family said, they really didn't accomplish much, coach. I went to their co-workers and I said, tell me what they did in their life. Give me something to talk about at the funeral. I said, well, coach, they were a good person. They showed up at work, but they never really did anything big. I went to community members and I said, man, tell me something. I want to eulogize this person properly. Tell me something they did in their lifetime. I said, they never really did anything big, coach. Do you know how sad it is to speak at a funeral? And not have anything to say about a person because they live such a common and ordinary life. Their family members don't have anything to say. Their friends don't have anything to say. Their co-workers don't have anything to say other than, man, they just, they just good, a good person. That's all we know to say. I want to live a life that, that there's so many things that the good Lord has allowed me to do that they can't even choose. They're like, man, I got to. Man, this dude has done so many things in his life on planet Earth. We, we got to narrow it down to the top three big things he did. Which is why I'm building greatness factories around the country. I don't want to be known just as a good coach. There's lots of good coaches. I want to be known as a person that put greatness factories in cities around the world. I want to be known that as a person that helped activate the prey drive in millions and millions of people. What do you want to be known for? See, part of being a person of interest is deciding what? I want to be a known quantity in the world. I want to do something so big that other people are talking about it. They're remarking on it because I lived a remarkable life. Well, if you don't have these ingredients, these are kind of the foundational things. You got knowledge, you got skill, you got desire, you got confidence, but not just any confidence. You need a contagious confidence. You need confidence that transfers. You need confidence that just by being in your presence, when you walk in the room, people play up versus play down. That's the kind of confidence you need. Where does that confidence come from, by the way? The stronger your knowledge is, the stronger your skill is, the stronger your drive is, the more confident you're going to be because confidence is the memory of success. Insecurity is a memory of failure. Confident people become people of interest. So when you think about it, look at this as we go down the right side. We need confidence. We need likability. We need connectivity. Connectivity is the ability to connect to anybody, anywhere, anytime. See, to be famous in today's world, you, 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 people have to feel connected to you. People have to feel connected to you. See, in the old days, to be famous, we had to do what? We had to be in the movies. We had to be a sports star. In today's world, you can actually become famous just by people feeling like they're connected to you. When I meet people today, they say, man, I watch your videos on YouTube every single morning, man. I see you every single day. Right? I, I, I feel connected to you. They say, how's your son Elias doing? And how's your daughter Ella Grace doing? And how's your wife Natalie doing? They feel like they know me when they met me because they've watched hundreds of my videos before we even met. Now, do you think those people have a higher probability of buying something from me or a lower probability? Because they know me. Everybody see that? See, a big mistake we make is we try to sell people things when they don't know who we are. So I tell my sales team, give them something. People ask me all the time, why do you put so much stuff out there in the market? Because here's what I know. When I give and I give and I give, there's going to be something that I say in one of those videos that somebody goes, I want that little bald-headed dude coaching me. Right? And it may take me 100 videos, Cody. It may take me 150 videos. It may take me a podcast. But somewhere along the way, you make a decision and say, man, that dude, my life would be better with that dude in it. And it may take me a long time, a long obedience in the same direction. But I give and I give and I give. See, we call people and say, hey, would you like to buy some insurance? <laughs> I don't know you. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you have to offer. So much better when I know you and you've given me things. 
If you study brain science, the brain science says never lead with your core offer. Your core offer should be the third thing somebody sees about you. That means they got to give you something. JD's got to give something. Give tax counsel. Give tax strategy. Give something. Give something. And then say, hey, man, if you like what I'm giving, would you like to sit down and talk about me being your guy? That's how you become known. Now, when you're looking at this, this is the law of diffusion. And this very seldom leads me wrong. This tells me when I present an idea to people, how many people are going to be open and inviting to that idea. Look at that small number over there on that one side. It says 2.5% are innovators. An innovator needs to see something one time, and they take action on it. Just one time. Nate Alford saw me speak. I mentioned Pray Drive one time. He walked right up to me and said, sign me up for your coaching program. And that's when I said, well, it's a million dollars. Just joking. He didn't care, though, because we believe the same things. He was over here, 2.5%. Look how small that number is. These people need to see an idea one time and they take action on it. These people need to see an idea one to three times and they take action on it. These people need to see an idea three to seven times and they take action on it. These people need to see something seven to 15 times before they take action on it. These people are never going to take action on it. I always joke and say you can move in with these people and they ain't buying anything. We could substitute the word laggards for losers. Because they're never buying. Now, how fast do you want to know where, where you are? How fast do you think I know if I have a legitimate prospect? How fast do you think I know if you're interested? One way, I share my beliefs and I look you right in the eye. I believe everybody needs a coach. I believe a good coach can change your life. I believe those that have a coach earn three and four times the amount of money than those that don't. And then I look right in somebody's eye and I say, do you believe that too? If so, step over here. If not, it's okay. Step over there. That's how I sell. I'm looking, but this tells me the truth. This tells me how many I have to go. So what is this telling you? You're not talking to enough people. This tells me for every 30 people I talk to, roughly 4.8 will be over here on the innovators and early adopter side. So if you're only talking to four, what if you're only talking to 10? What if you're only talking to six? Some of you are not going through enough people. Whether you're recruiting people, you're not going through enough people. Whether you're trying to build your business, you're not going through enough people. Okay, I'm adding 3,000 new leads every 90 days for my coaching business. It ain't enough. I don't need 3,000. I need 30,000. Everybody see that? The more known you become, the more leads you're going to get, the more opportunity. I call it return on objective. You think in terms of return on investment. I think in terms of return on objective. My objective is to become famous. My objective is to become known. My objective is to be a person of interest. And the more known I am, the more leads I'm going to get. Everybody understand that? So how do we become known? I started drawing this up on my iPad not long ago. And I started thinking about how does a person become known? When I was 15 years old, I was growing up in Tennessee and a little league baseball coach called me and said, will you help me coach a junior pro basketball team? And I said, yes. I got dressed up in a suit. I went and coached junior pro basketball. I was so passionate about it that I got ejected from a junior pro basketball game. I got three technical fouls by my best friend, by the way. And I got a standing ovation on the way out. But I had talent. I had curiosity. I had a teacher. I had experience. I had failure. I was finding my talent. If I ask you today what's your talent, because I believe becoming a person of, in, in, of interest in the world focus is on finding your talent. Do you know what your talent is? What is your hard skill? What problem can you solve? Who would write you a check for that? What is it that you have that I want? Right? I was finding my talent as early as 15 years old. If you, can, if you have kids, one of the best things you can do for your kids is help them find their voice. So what I was figuring out is, man, I like this. I have a talent here. Now, notice I put down there, screw your why. Here's why I say that. I've been coaching people for 28 years. Here's what, here's what I have found, folks. Many times you don't sit and find your purpose. I believe your purpose finds you. And it finds you when you are pursuing something. 
You are working the muscle. You are trying to get better. You are trying to grow. You are trying something because you have a curiosity. How many of you think passion, you can find your passion by curiosity? What do you love doing? What are you good at doing? What, is, what, what would you drive two states over to talk to three people tomorrow for free about? See, if you're just selling insurance, that's commodity. The insurance is a commodity. You have a talent. What's your talent? I can connect anybody, anywhere, anytime. That's the talent. I can diffuse people that, are dis, that, that, that have high levels of anxiety quickly. I can use humor to make people laugh. These are talents. Okay, Just selling insurance is not a talent. There's very, something very specific. So what I was learning during this period of my life is I was learning to have a hard skill, which is to coach people. I was identifying my talent. What if I told you, I, if I asked my top five people I'm coaching right now what their why is, what if I told you they couldn't tell me? Some people just have something that you can't put in them and you can't take it out of them. The pursuit becomes the reward. They get up every day to fight and get in the game every single day. So during this period in my life, my prey drive was activated. Now, what does that lead to? It leads to testing and retesting. You've had some big revelation in your life. Now, here's the revelation I had. 25 years old, I was a high school basketball coach. I was making $24,000 a year. But I was studying the psychology of inner engineering a person. I was studying Dr. Stephen Covey, who I studied for eight straight years. I was studying the whole person theory, how to tap into the body, the mind, the heart, and the spirit of a person. I was using this theory with my players. And I said, man, I need to write a book. People were constantly asking me, what are you doing with those kids? How are you doing it? How, how are you doing it different? Man, we come watch your teams play. They're so motivated. They have so much chemistry. And I said, man, I got to sit down and write a book. And I wrote a book called Changing Lives Through Coaching. Now, we don't sell that book today because it sucked. <laughs> Your first book's going to suck too. But I wrote it. What's the power of writing that first book? How many of you think you need a book? Raise your hand. How many of you think you have experiences that would help other people? Every hand in this whole auditorium should be raised. If life is worth living, it is worth writing down. Even if one person reads it. To be a person of interest, you need to write a book. See, when I wrote that book, people began to see me as an expert, as an authority figure. And I began to go speak. And people say, will you come speak, man? You're, we hear you're a top motivator. You got this book. Man, will you come speak? Because guess how many high school basketball coaches were writing books in those days? How many insurance dudes are writing books? Very few. You want to separate yourself? Would you rather have a business card or a book? Do you have a philosophy? Do you have a belief system? See, so at 25 years old, I sat down and I write a book. And unbeknownst to me, I wrote a book for coaches, but coaches would not buy it. Because coaches are stubborn and hard-headed, and they think they know everything. But business people got it. And so business people began to call me and ask me to speak to their group. They said, man, we got your book. Will you come over and speak to my company? And I'm like, sure, man, I'll come over there and speak. So I went to Dell Computers. I spoke for an hour. They paid me more in an hour than I made in a whole month. Okay? I had a revelation. And the revelation is, there, are, there is somebody in the world who will pay me 10 times the amount of money for my talent than where I'm currently making money. Does everybody see that? There is somebody who will write me a bigger check for my t skills. We call those blue marlins versus blue gills. You can wake up every day and fish for little blue gills. You can solve little bitty problems and you can make little bitty money. Or you can fish for blue marlins in the Gulf of Mexico. You can fish for bluegill in the local lake, or you can fish for blue marlins in the Gulf of Mexico. See, you got to make up your mind. Who would? See, look at the questions I'm asking myself. Oh, I understand. Now I need to be known. I've had a revelation. Somebody will pay me more money for my skill set. A lot more money. But I love those kids. And I was coaching those kids, and I was teaching those kids the seven habits of highly effective people and the principles of good to great and the five dysfunctions of teams. Imagine your 14-year-old daughter playing for me for four years. She would be a little stone-cold killing machine. <laughs> and I was pumping out these little winners like you can't imagine, and I loved them kids. And at Dell Computers that day, they paid me more in an hour than I made a month. And I had a revelation. The revelation was... Surely somebody else would come along and love these kids as much as I do, right? <laughs> like, I know I love them. 
But, but somebody else will love them as much as I do. I actually stayed six more years until I built a championship program that won seven of nine championships over the next nine years. And I started to become known in the world. Here's, here's the deal. The revelation. Some of you hadn't had the revelation. You're still fishing for blue gills every day. It's frustrating. You know deep inside of you, you got more talent. You got more skill. You should be getting a bigger paycheck. You should be helping more people. You should be doing bigger things, but you hadn't had the revelation. Who would write you the largest check? Who would write you the largest check for your skill set? Now, once I learned this, once I knew I had a skill, how many of you think you got a really good skill? Raise your hand if you think you got a really good skill. You got something special, right? Now it's a matter of how do we build demand for that skill? Because people of interest learn to distribute. I need to become known. I need to build demand. I have a specialized skill set, activating the prey drive in a person. Where did it come from? My decade of being a championship basketball coach. Now the question becomes, how do I go out into the marketplace and let people know this? How do I build demand for the skill? And I started one person at a time. How many of you think the key to the many is to the one? So I started showing up at anything where people would have me speak. One person, two people, three people. And every time I showed up, I wanted to deliver a transformational experience. Like the artist, like the entertainer, like the person that shows up and says, man, I'm going to be good. I'm going to deliver and I'm going to over deliver. What began to happen is one turned into two and two turned into three and three turned into 300. And the next thing you know, I got a network of people that want that skill because it solves a problem. If you don't remember anything else, money changes hands when problems are solved. The bigger the problem, the more money people will pay to solve that problem. I started to build demand for my skill. And this is part of the cycle of becoming a person of interest because now I'm building a network of like-minded people. The reason you come to 8% because it's a network of what? Like-minded people. We didn't say, hey, this is the 90, 90, what is it, 98% conference, 94% conference, 96% conference. What is that? 92% conference? I, did, I, was a, I was a PE teacher. Give me a break here for a second. <laughs> Advanced honors PE. We didn't call it the 92% conference. Hey, the 92% of failure is going to show up in Dallas this week. We're going to teach you how to fail at a bigger level. You showed up because you said, man, I want to be in the 8%. Some of you want to be in the 1%. Right or wrong? Some of you want to be in the point zero, 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 one percent I have a strategist that I pay every single month, and he came to me a few weeks ago. and He said, I got a stat I want you to start using. He said, there are 700,000 people in the United States that call themselves a coach. He said, the average income of those coaches is $47,000 a year. He said, Coach Burt, you are in the point zero, 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 one percent of top money earning coaches in the world. And I want you to start using that stat when you're selling your services. Something good to know, right or wrong? Some of y'all have had a bad coach in your life. That's why you don't believe in coaching. You've had one of those coaches that are making 47000 a year, right? You need a coach that's making $4 million a year or $40 million a year. Right? Somebody that knows how to monetize a skill set. It's no different in insurance. You have a skill. We have to monetize that skill. So the question becomes, how do I start creating structures of exchange? I got all these like-minded people. This is what's going to get you right here. I got all these like-minded people now. They're all coming to me. They're coming to me because of the skill that I have. I'm helping them make more money. I'm helping them get clarity. I'm helping them explain their services. And I start saying, man, we should build things for them to come to so they can exchange. This is where your personal of interest score goes to a higher frequency. And I started building out structures of exchange. So I was taking money from my coaching business, and I started buying these unique properties around the country, like this property right here down in Florida. This nine-bedroom, like a little hotel. And I started saying, we're going to start doing retreats down at this house in Florida so people can exchange with each other. How many of you think the value of you is also predicated by the value of the network you bring to the equation? You see, if I go and I create a structure where big-time people can come together and exchange energy, exchange ideas, exchange concepts with each other, then the va my value is greater, okay? Because I'm putting people of interest in a room, and they're learning from each other, and they're growing from each other. 
So this also gives my sales team a reason to call out. Hey, Coach Bert is doing a retreat down here. Hey, Coach Bert's doing an event down at the hangar. Okay, where we bring people together, where we get people excited, where we add new people to the funnel. People of interest are always doing something cool. Okay, what's the opposite of interesting? What are most people in insurance? All right, good. Boring. Insurance ain't sexy. You got to make it sexy. So, so what I do is I do cool things where I bring people together. And I say, man, let's bring people together from the best of the world, the insurance people and all these people. Let's bring them together, right? And then I bought this big lodge in Tennessee where we bring people together. Cody's been there. A lot of you have been there, and we bring people together. What's your version of this? Because every time I brought people together, it's something good things have happened. People of interest are doing cool things. I want you to think about that as you leave here. What are you doing? Are you selling insurance or are you creating cool things? that people can participate in? Are you building networks of like-minded people? Do you have a, an incredible instinct and skill set that other people need? You are a person of interest. Every morning when I wake up, I tell myself, I am a person of interest. People are counting on me to show up and grow up and deliver today. My positive energy is going to be greater than any negative energy I face. I am here to do something big on planet Earth. You have got to start seeing yourself in a different way. So let me bring it to a close here. The next big revelation is the concept of scaling. And that's really what I drew up. Because there's going to come a point in your life that the design of your business cannot get you to the next level, right or wrong. You have gotten yourself as far as you can get. You have gone as far as you can go with your little business model. And I started thinking, how do I scale this? How do I become more of a specialist? I am going pro. I'm constantly creating a new structure. My network is growing significantly. I am becoming, this is where you really start to become known and famous in the world, guys. Because now you are really getting very specialized. What if I told you all the greats that I work with, they all have a very, very special skill set. It's not vague. It's not generic. It's not common. It's very uncommon. This is when they're going from amateurs to professionals. How many years have they been doing it? 10, 20, 30. Long time cycles in the same direction and this is where you ultimately find your voice in life at the intersection of passion talent need in the world and conscience you have now found something that both motivates you and fascinates you every single day of your life you are a known quantity in the world because you are the best. You have found your voice, your calling, that which you were destined to do, to become somebody in the world. And when you do that, ultimately, this is why you want to be a person of interest. Deep within you is a desire to count, to matter, to contribute, to do something big, to take your insurance business. It's one thing to sell leads. It's one thing to create opportunity for people. It's another thing to create a movement. It's another thing to help thousands and thousands of people. It's another thing to become the number one person in the world. You have to leave your amateur desires behind. And at some point, you've got to go pro, man. You got to go pro. And that's what this conference is about. I want to challenge you as we leave here. Cody and I are going to be doing something over the next several weeks. And I know that in an hour, I can't help you find your voice in life. But I know in four weeks, we can start the cycle of you finding your voice. So we have put together a mentoring program, a coaching program. It's four weeks. It's with me and Cody Askins. Cody has used many of the strategies we teach in Person of Interest to build the 8% brand, to become known in the world. Uh, J.D. up here has used many of the philosophies in this book to become a person of interest. Nate Alford is using these philosophies to become a person of interest. And we want to coach you. Four-week journey, Cody and I, on how you truly become known in the world. The, the curriculum is set. 
And for four weeks, man, I want to be your coach. I want to show you how to be the person of interest you were destined to be. So as soon as we get finished here, Cody and I are going to be out at my booth. And I want to look you right in the eyeball, man. And I want, I want to look at you when you make a decision because the word decide means to kill off. Kill off fear. Kill off insecurity. Kill off doubt. Kill off your past. Kill off something. You come to a decision that I am tired of playing amateur and I am ready to go pro. And we want to be your coach for, for four weeks. So when I'm finished, I'm going to walk straight out there. I want to see you. I want to see you right in the eye. Cody's going to shake your hand when you make a commitment. I'm going to shake your hand when we make a commitment. And we're only taking 50 people out of the room. So if you're one of those 50 that said, Coach, I'm in, then we'll see you in the room. Everybody needs a coach in life. God bless you, and thank you for having me at 8%. One more time. Hey, if you love this, you're like, man, I want, it, I want 2021 to be better than 2020 was. I got seven steps that you need to apply right away. Check out the video. They're in there. See you over there. If you want to make $221,520 next year in 2021, I'm going to show you the seven steps that you need to master.